It has Arizona voters divided. Should we legalize marijuana? A recent poll found 50% of surveyed voters are in favor of Proposition 205, with 40% against it, 10% still undecided. The measure would allow anyone 21 or older to smoke recreational marijuana, but it comes with many concerns as well as many questions. Nine Your Side's Whitney Clark explains the issues. Legalizing marijuana was a bad deal for Colorado. Colorado is generating millions in new tax dollars for public schools. The debate over legalizing recreational marijuana has both sides pointing to Colorado. The drug dealers are benefiting, the schools are hurting, public safety is hurting, Colorado's hurting. We don't want that hurt in the state of Arizona. Good example is Colorado. Last year they made a billion dollars in legal sales. That's a billion dollars that is not going to the underground market. How much money have Colorado schools made from pot sales? According to the Colorado Department of Education, this fiscal year it received about $54 million for marijuana revenues, a fraction of its $5.4 billion budget. What about Denver public schools? The anti-legalization ads say the district hasn't gotten anything. Colorado schools were promised millions in new revenues. Instead, Denver schools got nothing. We reached out to the district for clarification. While it didn't apply for grants for state marijuana money, Denver public schools took in between two hundred and three hundred thousand dollars from a city marijuana tax. Not enough to make a significant difference. How much money would Arizona schools get? We can vote yes on Prop 205 and provide $55 million to our public schools every year. Pro-legalization ads cite an independent analysis. That report found Arizona public schools would receive an estimated $55 million in 2020. Critics say it's a drop in the bucket to our state's roughly $5 billion education budget. The unintended costs of legalization, a concern for Prop 205 opponents. What did Denver students get? Marijuana inedibles that look like candy marketed to kids. Kids can't buy marijuana legally, but there's concern they'd get sick from edibles that are packaged like candy. Post-legalization studies in Colorado have shown an increase in emergency room visits for kids accidentally exposed to pot. Since then, the state has made stricter packaging laws. And we're three years into this and we still haven't solved the problem of marijuana candy. It may be small numbers, but, but is one child too many? Is 50 children too many? What, what is the number that makes this unacceptable? Um, especially when it's invisible and, and it's in their favorite product. Yeah, what's that? Inside a nondescript warehouse in Tucson, the cultivation site for the Desert Bloom Relief Center. My opinion is that drugs should be treated as a public health issue and not as a criminal justice issue. Through a meticulous process, employees produce medical marijuana for about 1,500 people a month. Now operator Ari Rubin poised for something much bigger. It will open up a, a large new market if Prop 205 passes. The medical marijuana dispensaries will be allowed to convert into the new recreational licensure and that will afford uh, eight to ten times as many consumers. Opponents argue Prop 205 sets up a monopoly for existing medical dispensaries. Supporters say there's money motivations on both sides. Insys Therapeutics, a Chandler-based pharmaceutical company, donated $500,000 to support the anti-legalization campaign. The company produces a form of fentanyl, a powerful opioid up to 50 times as potent as heroin. Opioid addiction, a growing epidemic. 28,000 Americans died from opioid overdoses in 2014, a record high. Turns out the company plans on making a synthetic cannabis product. They have profits behind it and their profits are being threatened by marijuana legalization. They can no longer have the argument that this is for the better of Arizona, that they're just doing it for the kids, when they're getting a half a million dollar contribution from a big pharma. We're going to accept resources that help us communicate with voters. Now we have businesses across the state that are helping because they know that this is bad for our economy, they know it's bad for our kids. While both sides cite conflicting studies of the impacts of legalization in Colorado, it may be too early to know the long-term effects. Whitney Clark, KGA 9, on your side.